Today, I'll be talking about every single feature and spec the newly announced Sony a7 IV has and how it compares to the more expensive Sony a7S III and the previous generation Sony a7 III. The Sony a7 IV was announced last week and it seems like Sony consumers don't really know what to make of it. Some people seem to think it's not worth the upgrade and will be sticking to their older generation Sony a7 III, while others are quite excited about the spec bumps and new features the Sony a7 IV has, especially the ones it has over the Sony a7S III, a camera that's 1000 US dollars more. I've combed the internet and have watched and read everything I could find about the new Sony Alpha camera, and I've compiled a comprehensive list of basically every difference there is between the Sony a7 IV, the a7S III, and the a7 III, to help you decide on which camera is best for you depending on what you shoot and your budget. Starting off with the purpose of these cameras, the Sony a7 IV and the Sony a7 III are the hybrid, more entry-level class of the a7 series. They aren't the most photocentric cameras like the a7R or the best video cameras like the a7S, but they just might be the sweet spot for most people. The Sony a7 IV has the new Bions XR processor that the A1 has, a $6,500 camera, and it's also the same one that the a7S III has. That means the autofocus performance is incredible, and you're getting it in a much cheaper camera. The a7 III had an amazing AF system at the time, but now it's quite outdated. The AF system also has improved features such as eye tracking, which the a7S III has, but the a7 III was limited. The a7 IV also has animal and bird tracking in photo and video. The a7S III only has animal tracking in photo mode, not video and no bird tracking. The focus points were also bumped up to match the a7S III and the A1 at 759 focus points, while the a7 III only had 693. It also has a new 33 megapixel sensor compared to the 24 that the a7 III had and the 12.1 on the a7S III. This will let you crop in on your photos quite a bit more, especially when compared to the a7S III without losing a lot of detail. The a7S III's resolution is arguably more than enough for web-based content, but this isn't completely true for large prints, and the a7 IV is better equipped for that. This larger resolution also means that the a7 IV is shooting video in 7K and downsampling to 4K, giving it incredibly sharp and detailed video. The a7 III downsamples 6K and the a7S III is basically a one-to-one -one readout. The detail boost is great, but it has a major drawback trying to process all that information, which is rolling shutter. The a7 IV and a7 III unfortunately seem to have the same poor rolling shutter performance, while the a7S III is far superior, giving its computing far less information at 4K versus 7K. The rolling shutter performance on the a7 IV is bumped up in APS-C Super 35 mode because less of the sensor is being processed. And it's not all bad because the larger resolution sensor provides the a7 IV with a few more benefits. One is that when you go into Super 35 mode, you are retaining more megapixels and resolution. The a7 IV drops down to 15 megapixels, which equates to downsampling 4.6K in video, the a7 III drops to 10 megapixels and 3.9K video, and the a7S III only retains 5.1 megapixels sensor in Super 35, meaning on that camera, you can only shoot 1080p video when cropped in. I know there are a lot of people that use Super 35 mode to give themselves more reach using less glass, so it's great that the a7 IV can still produce 4K video cropped. Another thing I keep seeing is that the a7 IV is actually better in low light. It's not that much, but it seems to be cleaner and less noisy than the a7S III, the apparent low light king. This also translates to the a7 IV having slightly more dynamic range than the a7S III. It's worth noting though that Sony reports that all three of these cameras have a dynamic range of 15 stops. But I would imagine that in reality, the a7S III is better than the a7 III, and now the a7 IV looks to be slightly better than the a7S III. Talking about noise and dynamic range, the Sony a7 IV seems to have the same dual sensor characteristics that the a7S III has, but in a less extreme range. For S-Log3, the base ISO values are 800 and 3200, with usable footage still being captured at 25,000 ISO apparently. The Sony a7S III has its dual sensor values at 640 and 12,000, and if you were in the high thousands on the a7S III, you'd be getting extremely noisy footage, and it's worth bumping up to 12,800 to clean it up. So depending on how you shoot and how dark it is, the Sony a7IV wins slightly for having cleaner footage in the more middle range ISO values. Other things related to the sensor is now the a7IV has 5.5 stops of in-body image stabilization over just the 5 stops the a7III had. 
This is the same as the Sony a7S III has, and both the newer cameras also have active stabilization, which crops in by 1.1 times to electronically help stabilize with IBIS. The a7 IV can record 4K with no crop at 24 and 30 FPS, but unless you haven't heard a single thing about this camera, you probably already know that the 60 FPS has a 1.5 times crop, which is quite massive. The minor upside being that the rolling shutter will be improved when you're in the forced crop. The a7S III will obviously beat these specs by being able to shoot 24, 30, and 60 FPS in 4K with no crop and only a 1.1 times crop in 120 frames per second. The a7 III is expectedly the worst performer with only 24 FPS 4K no crop and 30 FPS being 1.2 times crop and no 4K 60. The a7S III can also do 240 FPS in 1080 while the a7 IV and 3 max out at 120 FPS in 1080. I do want to circle back a little to stabilization because like the a7S III, active stabilization on the a7 IV works in 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. From what I'm seeing online is that the 4K60 still gets a 1.1 times crop added to the 1.5 times it already has for a total of 1.6 times. The only reason I mention this is that the a7S III does not let you use active stabilization in 120 frames per second because it's already using that 1.1 times crop to boost the computing power needed to process those extra frames. If active stabilization worked in 4K 120 FPS on the a7S III, it would give it a 1.2 times crop, which would drop it below 4K. This is maybe why Sony didn't include this, so it's really nice that active stabilization at 60 FPS on the a7 IV still works even though it's being double cropped. Moving from frame rates into codecs, the a7 IV basically matched all the crazy amount of options you get in the a7S III. It has XAVC, HS, S, and SI, and I think a lot of people were surprised by this. Sony also included 10-bit 422 internal recording with several bitrate options for each. I personally thought these options would be restricted to the more video-centric a7S III. The a7 III was restricted to just XAVC-S and 8-bit color, so this is a massive upgrade and the fact that the a7 IV has it is huge. A strange thing I will mention though is the bit rates. It seems that the bit rates are the exact same for the frame rate, codec, and color bit depth combinations for the a7 IV and a7S III. I would have thought that the higher resolution, downsampling 7K sharper video would have higher bit rates, especially the 1.5 times cropped on the 4K60 on the a7 IV, given it's not even using the whole sensor. This is something I'll have to do some real world tests on once I get the a7 IV in my hands. Another benefit that the a7 IV and the a7S III have is that S and Q modes have the exact same bit rates as the regular movie modes. S and Q on the a7 III had bit rates that were far lower and the quality was noticeably reduced. It's also worth mentioning that none of these cameras can do 1080, 120 FPS, and 10-bit. You are limited to 8-bit. So the a7S III wins here again because in 4K, it can record 120 FPS in 10-bit. The a7S III can also record a whopping 16-bit color, which I believe is true raw through an external monitor. Both the a7 IV and the a7S III do not get any bit depth bumps through external recording. The Sony a7IV joins the a7S III with ditching the record limit. Now you can record with storage and battery power being your only limitations. The a7 III was capped at 29 minutes. All three of these cameras have a 1 8,000th of a shutter and a max of a 30 second shutter long exposure, and they all shoot moderately fast at 10 frames per second. The a7IV and the a7S III both allow you to pick if you want to shoot with mechanical or electronic shutter, while the a7III was only electronic and the a7S III and the a7III had compressed and uncompressed raw shooting options. Now the a7IV takes a feature from the a1 and includes a lossless compressed raw, which retains the same amount of information in half the size as uncompressed raw. This new raw format is definitely a benefit, but I've seen that the 10 FPS drops to five or six FPS. I believe this is the same for uncompressed raw as well. And when you're shooting those high frame rates, you're going to want a nice fast memory card. The Sony a7 IV accepts the insanely fast and expensive CF Express Type A card in slot 1 and a UHS-2 card in slot 2. The a7S III wins here by having both the card slots accepting both types of cards. The a7 III was limited to a UHS-2 card in slot 1 and only a UHS-1 card in the other slot. Before I go into the more physical differences about these cameras, I wanted to touch on some of the cool features that the a7IV got that neither of the other two cameras have. One is digital lens compensation, which crops in so that as focus is being racked from infinity to minimum focusing distance, the edges of the frame won't move at all. This is something only super expensive cinema lenses do, and I haven't seen any other camera do it digitally. You do lose a little info to a crop, but if you got a scene that is shifting its focusing distance a lot, 
you will make your shot look a lot cleaner without the edges constantly zooming in and out. Then there is the new focus map overlay, which looks like it could be a little distracting and difficult to frame your shot properly. Red on your screen will show what's out of focus in the front, and blue will be what's out of focus behind. Some people seem to be excited about it, others don't seem to be huge fans. But I can see how it would be a lot easier to manually rack focus over focus peaking. Everything without color shows what's currently in focus. Then the A7 IV simplifies the process for using it to live stream. You just need to plug it into your computer and it should recognize the camera as a webcam immediately. Live streaming is possible with the other two cameras, but you need additional programs and accessories to make it work. Now it's just plug and play. Another really cool thing is a variable shutter option, which basically lets you pick any shutter speed you want and you are not limited to the normal stops of shutter speed. This is great for trying to find a speed that will remove the flicker from artificial lighting. Moving to the outside of the camera, thankfully they decided to add a fully articulating screen on the a7 IV to match the a7S III instead of the tilt screen on the a1. It's also fully touchscreen being able to move through the menus and touch for focus. The a7 III could only tilt and had a very limited touchscreen capability. And the a7 IV wins big time by finally using a shutter to protect the sensor when you're switching lenses, something I really wish the a7S III had and of course the a7 III didn't. All three LCD screens are only three inches, but the a7S III has the highest resolution with 1.44 million dots, 1.03 million on the a7 IV, and 0.92 million on the a7 III. The a7S III also has the highest resolution on the electronic viewfinder, with 9.44 million dots, 3.68 million on the a7 IV, and 2.36 million on the a7 III. So still upgrades. The body of the camera got a little beefier and also matches the a7S III, with a larger grip over the a7 III, which I've seen a lot of people complain about. The a7 IV takes a slight win here by separating photo, video, and s &Q mode from the main dial and giving its own dedicated one. In addition, the exposure control dial on the a7 IV can now be programmed to any setting, and the a7S IV and a7S III both have full-size HDMIs, which is an upgrade over the micro HDMI found on the a7 III. And the a7IV and a7S III have the new menu system, which is significantly better over the older generation. And lastly, both the a7IV and the a7S III record gyro data so you can turn off the in-body image stabilization, bump up the shutter speed, and get probably the best looking digital stabilization on the market. The a7III did not have this option. If you didn't know about Sony's free Catalyst Browse software, I go over every single feature and how to use it in this video linked here and down below. So that's the new Sony a7IV and it clearly has a lot of spec bumps over the older generation a7 III. It even competes and beats the a7S III in a few areas. Personally, I think it looks like a great camera, and I pre-ordered one as soon as my local shop had it listed online. Let me know below what you think of the a7 IV, and if you think it's a worthy upgrade. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Take care.